My interest in the latest OMD EM5 is as a photographer. As an Olympus mentor, I received the privilege to try the latest cameras, in this case the Mark III version of the EM5. I am conscious of quality, but not how it gets there. Therefore, my review, such as it is, is based on a real-life experience from the point of view of technical ignorance. Here, a shoot over four days in the Lake District. These results are my witness. Never mind how they were taken technically, but perhaps like any other photographer, possibly you. The landscape photographer is at the mercy of weather. On this occasion, the south got all the rain, a rare example of the jet stream going over Europe in November. It was cloudy for much of the time, but the light kept changing, causing us to move location. This was our finale, but I will come back to this astonishing scene later. I don't confine my photography to early morning or late evening, but I couldn't resist this. A glorious red dawn with mist and reflections. What more do you want? This was my last photographic holiday for HF Holidays at Derwent Bank, which is blessed with its own shoreline on Derwent Water. Of the four dawns, this was the only decent one, but it got everyone out of bed. I used the 12 to 100 Pro lens, not the best lens for the EM5. Because of size and weight, it upsets the ergonomics. The best lens would have been the 12 to 40, but that was not available to me. However, at Aeroforce Undercloud, I tested the image stabilization at both ends of its 8 times zoom. Camera shake when hand holding is exaggerated at telephoto, but that did not seem to be a problem for the EM5 Mark III with a shutter speed of a tenth of a second. However, I did hold my breath. My spot meter views of high contrast, but I don't expose to the right as highlights will be rendered irredeemable. I don't like HDR or filters. It is too artificial, so I spot meter a highlight, save the raw and correct underexposed shadows in Lightroom. That way you have more control. Noise could raise his ugly head. But I seem to have got away with it, a distinct improvement with the EM5 Mark III. These shots are of Brothers Water, but at Dacre Church I tested the noise factor again as low light photography demanding long shutter speeds can also cause noise. The churchyard is guarded by four stone bears, now showing their age, supposedly pre-Saxon, but their presence has puzzled historians. A walk by the River Derwent in Borodale brought more scenes of high contrast, again expertly handled by the EM5, and maybe the photographer as well. But, on the cloud, it was time for patterns and close-ups of the Lakeland scenery.
finale took place at Kasserig Stone Circle, just outside Keswick. I had planned it as my last shoot after leading 250 holidays in 25 years for HF Holidays. And oh boy, did we get an incredible sunset to finish. You have to spot me to a scene like this, which even the eye has a struggle with. The electronic finder is invaluable for judging the best exposure, plus a bit of Lightroom work, a technique never possible with a DSLR camera and an optical viewfinder. I spoilt my group with a rendering of Jerusalem from my iPhone, so they are probably pleased that I'm retiring after leading holidays, but not photography. Thankfully, you may think, I cannot play it here because of copyright. One of my photographers suggested organ music to accompany the sunset, so here is a bit of Bach instead. I enjoyed my brief excursion with the EM5 Mark III, finding the controls not too dissimilar to the EM1. That camera I will continue to use, but would certainly consider the EM5 if the shoot meant carrying something a bit smaller and lighter for trekking something like 15 miles over mountain and moorland, but without other gear. <laughs> 